Mixer. <laughs> hey. Mixer. <laughs> oh, look at that dance going on. Oh, man. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the live stream of VR Church in VR Chats of the 1st of December. Woohoo! December. This is near. I can finally wear the skin and no one can say anything. Yeah. And, um, yes. It's great. It's a special day. Today we're going over, uh, not over acts. We're, we're taking a break from acts, but we're going over um, Matthew one to say uh, it's all Christmas time, so we're gonna do uh, gonna share the the story <laughs> of the birth <laughs> of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Can I get an amen? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> this is the season yes! of celebrating his birthday, so um, I'm gonna. Yeah, we're gonna start in a few minutes here. I don't know what's up with your mic, buddy. <laughs> yeah. like, oh no, I think I have that glitch. Hang on. You do. Your microphone is farting. <laughs> oh no, yeah, it does that. You're burning. So we're about to start in a few minutes. Uh, I think uh, people are. Uh, Who's are Tiny Shrek or Baby there. there we go. Hi, Architect. Hi. Hey, what's up? Thirty minutes before you can try. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Think about it. It was a good week. It was busy. Alina. Right. Thanksgiving. Gumball. Oh, this service. Nice. I have Whoopi, to go try. I went in and reset my password. Yeah, okay, Jay. I mean, if yeah, it after that, um, it doesn't work, the next thing I'd probably recommend is try running a malware bite scan. Oh, nice. Hey, everyone. Welcome to VR Church. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. Haha. All right. After this, I. I have my it's new a, password. Uh, my DJ is back. Do the driver thing. Yeah. Oh, and what's up, that. Mixer, YouTube? What's going on? There you go. It's good to be back. I was away for two weeks, <laughs> and I missed my church family. And it's good to be back today. I'm excited. Uh, new drivers, so I don't have see to all these beautiful avatars. It'll tell me it's right good to be I'm here. Here. Which is awesome. Awesome. How are you doing? Uh, wait, hold on. So even if it's not the fix, oh, I'm like shifted it's in my world. That is really helpful you... for me anyway. No, oh, there we go. in my world. What are they called? Navita experience. Shifted in my world. Yes, Navita experience. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, super excited. Hopefully, it's fixed too. So KJ, KJ, like keep moving your leg a little bit, right? A little bit. Awesome. I wish I had my little hearts in here, like it so easily. Yeah, you still have hearts. Yeah. I still have hearts. Like Bam! Just like that. Bam! Look at all the love. Bam! Look at go. all the love. Big old hearts. Well, Groot. Or not Groot. It is Groot. Aww. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And money. Love and money. Love and money. I am Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. Money. So oh, what's that from? We can, we can spend the prison. Oh, oh, yeah, we... Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, the Christmas oh, snowball! Oh, snowball fights! Snowball fights! Snowball fights! Snowball fights! Is that an emoji? Yeah! Oh, nice. snowball emoji? Oh, oh gaming PC coming to pie. That's what I'm talking about. Is it a VR oh. ready? I can't oh, Yeah, <laughs> of course. Nice. Woo -hoo. Oh, oh, oh. My hand is literally turning. <laughs> yeah. oh. 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 I need someone to make me a baby Yoda. I need someone to make me a baby Yoda. Everyone. Labs has a new update out now. Yeah, where uh, you can actually multi stream. Uh, and uh, I'm going to take a look Welcome. at it. I believe that you can multi stream now yeah, to. I, yeah, I don't know you can stream to Mixer That's and Facebook live at the same time. Really? Me and Tyler were talking about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool to get try, streaming over to Facebook. Also, um, it's not oh. He is here. Oh, he's here. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to do that. Especially for our Facebook page. We are going to yell 
It's the wise ape. The wise ape. This is not working. That's awesome. Let me turn on some. Hey, Bismic, Pastor Bismic. Oh, I know something. I just watched The Lion King with my kids this week for the first time. For the first time? <laughs> All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started with Church for Today. If you're here for church, uh, we're going to head over to the amphitheater over there. And if you're not here for church, you just want to hang out, you can feel free to stay around here and chat. But let's head over there, and we'll begin. Well, this was this was so laggy. Lag Are you on the quest? On the quest, yes. Oh, <laughs> Oh my! Oh, okay. Oh. Did somebody okay. fall in well, there? Hi. Didn't knew that. Hey. Oh, whoa. Okay. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Hey, let's get up. Hey. Hello. Hi. Okay. Hey, okay. Hello. Hey, uh, Quentin can't make it today, so you can just free roam, I can't or it. keep it still, whatever you want. No. Why? What's going on? Oh, what is going? Oh, there it goes. I. No, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm just it's just out of my reach. <laughs> All right. Oh, it is such a leggy experience on the quest. I didn't know that. Whoa. Yeah, it is kind of rough. What's going on, fellas? Hello. I'm gonna have to grab that avatar. That is really cool. You know what you might want to try, Bismarck, is uh, see if that new um quest link works any better. Okay. You uses your computer as well. Yeah, I, I I will put on my quest link. Uh, I think right during the service. Nice one. Right here, right where I'm standing. Can you put it so I stand right here? Okay, I do this I right now. Um, just so I can be yeah, a little nice. closer. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, well, let's go ahead and begin with church, guys. Well, welcome to church in VR chat. We just want to welcome you. Uh, we are one church in many metaverses. We meet in Altspace VR, Rec Room, and in VR Chat. And we're pretty new to the VR Chat. We're, we kind of think of it as an experiment, but this has just been growing and growing. And I think we're realizing that um, we're actually going to go official with VR Chat very soon. So thank you for being a part of the practice services, the big experiment. And uh, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, Pastor Lena, I'm going to have you come up and talk about uh, life groups in just a second. Uh, Pastor Bismick, if you don't mind, open it up in prayer in just a moment. And if this is your first time and you're like, wait a second, this is a church and there's pastors and um, you guys are, you know, what is this? Then, yes, you have discovered virtual reality church. So welcome. Um, and I think Bismick had to go put his uh, Oculus Quest on the link. So he'll be back. So maybe, Elena, you can do life groups and open a prayer for us, um, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so welcome. Thanks for being a part of our service today. Um, before we begin, we just have a couple of requests. Um, if you don't mind uh, making sure you have a quest optimized avatar to lower the lag, um, that would be awesome. So kind of check and see if you have a quest. It looks like everyone's pretty much, looks like everyone. But uh, if you don't mind, just uh, double check that. Uh, get something quest optimized, and that'll just really help out uh, with people that are on the quest. We want to make sure that they have a somewhat of a decent experience. I know it's a little tough once you get over 10 people. Uh, you start to run into issues with uh, the quest, but um, as much as we can, we want to do that. And then uh, Pastor Ali, oh, we just want to say hello, by the way, to our uh, people watching on live on Mixer and on YouTube later. What is up? Um, and so, yeah, thanks for hanging out. It's good to see you. Um, and Pastor Lena, before you come up and do uh, life groups, uh, one thing that we were a couple of things we really is it's really important for us as a church, and for us as leaders of the church is that you know this, is that everyone is welcome to VR Church. It doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. Maybe you're here and you're an atheist, and that's fine. I don't know what your religious background is, or maybe you don't even have a religious background. I want you to feel comfortable. I heard someone last week um, that was typing in our Discord channel, and they were saying they're really nervous to come. You know, they hadn't been to church in a while. And we want people to feel comfortable. We want them to feel loved. This isn't a place for religious arguments and debates. You know, you can do that, you know, in your own world or in your own Discord server. This is a place where we want to experience God's love for you. And 
we want you to experience God's power. And that's really, really important to us as a church. And um, Pastor Lena, why don't you come share your heart about life groups and Discord? And um, that'd be awesome. If you don't mind standing here for the camera, because we're live streaming, mm -hmm. um, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's give some emojis for Pastor Alina. Mm -hmm. Where's my heart emoji? <laughs> oh, I, got, I see the broken heart one. Yeah, we, there I, you go. I know that's <laughs> a little hard to get to in here. Oh, thank you, guys. Oh, that's so sweet. I ah, just want to catch it. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's begin first with a, uh, a prayer, and then I'll tell you all about um, Discord and life groups. Those are really exciting. So, mm. Oh, Lord, just thank you so much. Thank you so much for this time we have together. Thank you so much um, for for us just leading us all together, that, that for every new person that discovers us, us and comes here and can experience your power and your love um, in a way that maybe they haven't been able to in, ever or, or in a very long time. And we're just so incredibly grateful for this. And then we just ask that you touch every heart here today, that you, that you let them feel, not just in your mind, like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know you love me. But, but but feel that in a way that moves every one of us to want to draw near to you, that, that actually touches our heart in such a meaningful way, in such a powerful way, that we, that we can feel your presence and that we take this, this love and this, and this power that, that you bless on each of us and, and as we go through the service we are 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 filled with the wisdom that you that you want each of us to 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 know and this may be different from person to person and then as we go about our week lord that we just ask that you that instill in us so much of your love and your power that we go forward um in this week as we go to our works and and our friends and wherever else we go in our life and be our chat um, and share this amazing um, gift of your love with, with everyone else, Lord. We just thank you. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so super excited about Discord and life group. First, Discord. Discord is where the life of the church happens throughout the week. Um, we don't just meet on Sundays, and life doesn't just happen on Sundays. Sometimes you um, you need a little bit of more encouragement, or maybe you want to give some more encouragement. Um, and Discord is a place to do that. So we meet there um, throughout the week. We chat. We play games. Uh, we're there to pray for one another if you're in need of prayer. Um, support and encouragement. Uh, this is where we, we've got this never-ending growing list of different services and life groups and other events, special events and, and things going on. And, and this is where you'll find the times, dates, locations, because all of those are growing and spreading. And it can be complicated. So you'll find that oh, everything that you could ever want to do with the church, um, the when and where you find on Discord. Um, you'll also find out on Discord about our life groups and the when and where to join those. We have them here in VR chat, rec room, and alt space. And these life groups are where we, we meet in smaller groups so that we can really get to know each other. And we can be there to encourage one another and pray for each other during the week. And as my, my favorite part is that we can share our insight on what on what we've received from the previous um, week's sermon. Because as I was mentioning earlier, like we each receive something different. We're, we're blessed with, with, with different insight. And at Life Groups, we can share that and, and learn and grow from each other. And it's super duper exciting. So yes, encourage you to join a Life Group and definitely join, join our Discord. And it all starts at vrchurch.org. Super easy. If you remember one thing, vrchurch.org. And that will lead you to the link to Discord and everything else we just described and so much more. I believe that's it, it uh, Pastor Sutter. It's all yeah, you. thanks, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Lena. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's um, go ahead and 
to hop right into the sermon. Um, and no worries. If this is your first time to be our church, you think to yourself, man, I've been to sermons before. They take like hours. Now we just spend like 10 or 15 minutes looking through the scriptures. Um, and so it's not, it's not a whole long sermon, but we do want to talk about some things. Um, today is really uh, just about uh, we're going to be talking about Christmas. It's December 1st and Christmas is coming up soon. And um, yeah, so we're really excited about our Christmas series. And today we're going to be looking through the different points of the Bible um, through like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And then who's this? Jelliot. Jelliot, do you mind uh, switching your avatar, my friend? That would be awesome. If not architect, you mind uh, kicking uh, Jelliot if he uh, doesn't change. Um, I'm sure he will, though. And if not. I'm sorry. What's that? I, I had uh, avatars blocked by default, so I didn't see. Wait, give me one second. Uh, oh, yeah, hey, no problem. Uh, just, no worries. Just it's not a big deal. Uh, um, anyway, so, yeah, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, Christmas uh, through the eyes of, of um, the Gospels. Uh, we're going to go look at uh, Matthew was a follower of Jesus, uh, also in the book of Luke. So we're going to be doing Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 2, and then that's where we're going to be looking through uh, those things. So uh, today we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 1. And before we kind of get into that, I want you to think about a couple things, because I don't know um, if you celebrate Christmas, um, if that's part of your um, you know, family tradition. Maybe you do. Maybe you celebrate it as a, a general holiday. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't celebrate it spiritually or religiously, or I don't know what your background is, but here's a couple things I want you to think about when it comes to Christmas. I love Christmas trees. Do we, I, I bet you, isn't there emojis, a Christmas tree emoji or a section? I thought I saw one before. It looks like there's some holiday ones. Um, we got some presents and some candy canes and some, uh, some snow ones. Um, those are awesome. So yeah, feel free to shoot those out. But here's a couple things I want you to think about is that Christmas, although I love the presents, I love the Christmas tree, I love all those things. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. It's the story of when he comes to earth. And here's something that's really important that I don't want you to miss, is the reason why he came. He didn't come because he was like on a sightseeing tour or just because he felt like it, or he came to judge the world. No, Jesus came for us, for you, and for me, because he loves us, and he came to die for our sins, and he came so that we could live a life that's full and wonderful. You know, and that's such beautiful news, because you know, you, you know, the message of Christmas can get lost in all the hustle and bustle. And by the way, I love all that Black Friday, you know, Christmas shopping. I got a bunch of Echo Dots um, from Alexa on Amazon. Oh, that's all great. But the reason for the season of Christmas is this person named Jesus Christ. He was fully God and fully man, and he loves us. And I, I love what one person said. He said, the, the message of Christmas is a rescue mission. Jesus was on a rescue mission for you and for me, because he knew that the world, you know, some of us would struggle with depression and anxiety, and fear, and health, and discouragement. There's all these things that we were going to face. And you know what? Jesus was like, you know what? I'm not going to let them do that alone. I'm going to come down to help the world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus Christ, and that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the reason Jesus came it's because God loves each and every one of you. I know you might not feel like it. that's true. I know you might not think like that's true. But the truth is, the Christmas is a rescue mission where Jesus has come down to save us. And some of, and many of us, all of us need saving from one thing or another. And so that's a beautiful thing. And we're going to be looking at uh, uh, Matthew chapter 1. And we're only going to spend uh, not a whole lot of time on here because it starts out with a genealogy. So there's a bunch of names. So if you go to Matthew chapter 1 in the Bible and start reading it, it's like this person begat this person who begat this person. It's a big family tree. And I don't know if you've you know, uh, searched your family tree or not. And maybe if you've looked through it, you've seen some great things like, oh, man, this my grandfather was an amazing person who, this, who did this. 
maybe you found some not so amazing things like, oh boy, my uncle, woo, you know, he was crazy. <laughs> and it's the same thing in this genealogy. I think that there's a couple things that the writer of the Bible wants us to understand. I think one of those things is that he wants to show us that this was like legit. This is a historical record. This Jesus guy wasn't some random person that just came down and he, we just discovered him. And we thought he was great and all that. No, there is this beautiful genealogy of the Messiah that was prophesied thousands of years ago. I think the writer wanted us to see that. And then I think the writer also wanted us to see how jacked up the, the, the family tree was. Because, I, you know, we don't have time to do it today. And one of these days, I'm going to do a message on just the family tree of Jesus because it was messed up. You think your family was jacked up or your uncle's crazy or your, your grandfather this or that or this relative. I mean, you should see the genealogy and the family tree of Jesus that was just so dysfunctional. And what, what I love about that is I believe the writer wanted us to know that, listen, it doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've done. God is still going to fulfill his purpose. God is still going to fulfill his purpose in your life. That's beautiful. It wasn't like this. Uh, uh, let, let's take like Great Britain, this English monarchy, this you know beautiful line. And I know there's problems in there, but from the public perception, this beautiful royal bloodline. Man, there is some dysfunction in that family tree, and it's such a beautiful thing because I think it shows that God is going to fulfill his purpose no matter what. And it's, a, it's like a statement the writer wants us to look at our lives and say, you, you might say to me, Pastor, you're talking about God's love and God's power, and you're talking about Jesus came down to rescue me from my depression and fear, and I don't believe it. My family's messed up. My dad was in jail. My mom was an addict and all these things. And the beginning, if, if we dove into this more, we would see that it doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've done, who your mom is, who your dad is, what your relatives are. God is going to fulfill his purpose in your life. He did it with the line of Jesus Christ, and he's going to do it with you. And there's such beautiful hope in that. Anyway, so let's... um. Look at some of the scripture because we're, we're in Christmas season, so we're going to learn some of that. And as you can see here, there is a lot of genealogy. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. And it started from Abraham, and it went to Solomon. Man, I wish I could spend some time on Solomon because that was like uh, a scandal, a scandal. That's, that was, we wish we could spend some time in there because that just shows God's grace and God's love despite our, our mistakes. Um, and this ge genealogy keeps going um, all the way through Babylon. And we're not going to read it all. We're just going to kind of skip through here. Uh, after the Babylonian exile, man, this is, we're talking a long time ago. Well, let me see if I can get that here. And then now we come to the genealogy. So it starts out here and the writer shows us this um, genealogy to show the historical record of Jesus Christ and to encourage us that despite our mistakes and failures, God's going to fulfill his purpose in our lives. And then finally, we come to Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. And so it listed all the, all, all those listed above included 14 generations from Abraham to David. Um, and Abraham is like uh, the father of many nations. David is the same guy who killed Goliath. Remember the story of David and Goliath? And you have 14 from David to the Babylonian exile and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. So the writer's like, listen, this isn't random. This isn't made up. This isn't just some thing we just thought up and thought it would be cute to do. No, this was a prophetic word that has been fulfilled, and I wanted you to see it for your very own eyes. We can actually trace this uh, story. All right, so well, let's talk about the birth of Jesus, because that's what the season's all about. And by the way, today is just uh, kind of an intro, because we're going to get more uh, deep into what this is all about. I'm going to bring some references for uh, uh, the, um, the Mandalorian, if you're watching that on Disney+. Plus. Um, if somebody can find me a Baby Yoda avatar um that would be awesome for next week's service i really would no spoilers, love that please because I don't uh, no spoilers no mandalorian no no spoilers but if you don't know there's a baby yoda there then uh you 
it's, I'll have to give that one out, out at least. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that would be a big help to me. So let's go to the next part of the section. So this is how, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know we're kind of reading this thousands of years later, but you got to put yourself in that story. Imagine if you're Mary, you're just chilling, you got engaged to the man of your dreams. I mean, the future looks bright. And then one day you kind of look down and you're like, wait a second. I'm pretty skinny, but uh, I got a little bit of a round thing going on here. I got to cut off the carbs. Maybe I'm eating too much bread. A couple weeks later, it gets bigger and bigger. And to your shock and horror, you realize you're pregnant. You're like, what the heck? What the heck is going on? I'm a, I'm a virgin. I didn't. What's happening? You know, you have to put yourself in that mind. See, we read the story later and we've heard the nativity story over and over again. So it just we're just kind of used to it. But man, imagine if you're Mary and this little, you know, belly started to show. I mean, what was going through her mind? Maybe there was fear and anxiety, and maybe she was upset, and she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. This miracle happened where she was, she became pregnant. It wasn't through a, a sexual relation or anything like that. It was a miracle. Uh, theologians call it the miraculous uh, uh, conception. So... Imagine this. Okay, you're already freaking out. And then now you got to go tell Joseph. So you go to Joseph, you go, Joseph, sweetie, honey, guess what? Uh, can you sit down for a second? Um, so I'm pregnant. And so you can imagine, put yourself now in Joseph's shoes. Who did she cheat with? Who, who is she running off with? He probably was really upset and just very hurt. But then Mary goes and says something absolutely crazy. She goes, Joseph, I'm still a virgin. I'm pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know what Joseph would have thought? All right, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm not even angry at you anymore. I'm not even hurt anymore. We're going to maybe check you in into the loony bin. Uh, maybe get you some mental help, maybe some a psychologist, because that's crazy. And so Joseph was going to divorce her because getting engaged back then, was like getting married. So it was almost like a divorce, even though you're engaged. So um, Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. So Joseph's a great guy. He's a good man. And even though he doesn't, obviously he doesn't believe the story. Uh, Joseph, honey, <laughs> I'm still a virgin and I'm there was just a miracle birth going to happen because he was still going to put her away privately or, or break off the engagement or have this divorce. I'm sure Mary was devastated. I'm sure Joseph was confused and frustrated. Like, like I, I could feel like Joseph saying, just tell me the truth. Who was it? <laughs> Who did you hook up with? And so just when things couldn't get crazier, here, let's look what happened next. If I can get the next screen up. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, there was probably already a lot on Joseph's plate. But man, this probably just is like unbelievable. Now this angel has to get involved. Like Joseph, Joseph, Mary's telling the truth. Take her to be your wife. She's carrying the, the, the son of God. And the son of God is on a rescue mission to save the people from their sins. People who are addicted and afraid and discouraged and lonely and depressed and broke. And fearful, Jesus has come to save the world. And that, Joseph's mind was like, you know, what is happening? I don't, you know, but he believed the angel. So, uh, like I said, we're just going to, this is kind of the beginning of the story. There's a lot more to get involved in. And all this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. And you can look in the Bible thousands of years before this was written. Look. 
the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is going to judge the earth, or God is angry at people. Now, what does it say there? God is with us. And that's beautiful. The name of Jesus is actually Emmanuel, and the translation of that is God is with you. Through your difficulty, through your discouragement, through your addiction, through your failure, through whatever you're going through, the literal name of Jesus means that God is with you. And, and it's not like God is with you if you have it all together, if, you, if you're a perfect person. No, when God sent Jesus, he knew the world was jacked up. And we're going to see in later stories how jacked up the world is. And so it's not about having it all together and living your life perfectly. And then Jesus is with you. No, he already knew. And Jesus was born to come to this earth to save the people from their sins. And his name is called Emmanuel, which means that God is with you and you and you and you. You say, Pastor, I, I, I don't think God's with me, but he is. And that is the beautiful part of the Christmas story I want you to learn about. It's not just about trees and presents, and that's great. It's not about the nice nativity and the cute little baby. That's great. It's about God is with all of you through your joys, through your sorrows, or when things are growing great and you're on the mountain, or things are going to hell in a handbasket, God is with you. Amen. And I hope that you, the, the, your spirit and the eyes of your faith realize this truth. R regardless of how you feel, regardless of how you think, you know deep down in your spirit, you know what, God's with me. Even I feel awful, even the thoughts in my mind are just out of control. God is with you. Man, that's the story of Christmas. It's beautiful. And so when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until, until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Let's see here. Oops. Uh, there we go. I think that was the last verse right there. Yeah, and Joseph named him Jesus. So uh, uh, just like uh, The Mandalorian or Netflix or Hulu, it's to be continued because there's a lot happening in this story. Um, and I don't want to like spoil some of it, but man, there's this king called Herod that looks to kill Jesus. There is a mission, you know, Jesus came to on a rescue mission. Well, there is this diabolical evil mission to try to kill Jesus. So we're going to be talking about that more. So this Christmas story is pretty wild, man. It's, you know, it's, it's great with the nativity and the sheep and all that's cute and Mary and the, and the, and the swaddling clothes. But there is this also this like dark side. And that's when we're talking about the Mandalorian. Um, so you better catch up to it next week because I'm going to, I'm not going to give spoilers, but I am going to talk about the series because there's a correlation between baby Yoda and here. Jesus. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, I'll give a, I'll give a spoiler warning for that. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of our service for today. Let's close in prayer. Is Pastor Bismick here? I don't know if he uh, made it back to the service. I don't see Pastor Bismick. Yeah, he is here. Right, can Pastor... you hear me? Oh, there you are, Bismick. Can you... can yes. You hear me? yes can you hear Your me? voice is a little, uh, like, airy. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very sorry. Uh, yes, I can pray. I will make it short for um, my voice isn't that good because the Oculus Link has some problems. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, so, if you don't mind closing us in prayer. And then after yes. we pray, let's hang out and uh, hope to see you on Discord. So uh, thank you, Bismick. Okay. Uh, where's the microphone here? Um, so thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a cool, very cool sermon that shows us um, your love and it shows us that not our geology, uh, not the, the, the family we are from um, says what we are right now. And I thank you so very much that you can, you, that you're able to make us complete new persons, complete new humans. And um, you came here to save us all. And yeah, now we are here. 
um, with the ability to get saved through your love and your grace. And thank you that you showed yourself powerful against all um, against all persecution that all, also you faced. And when you faced persecution and you survived it and you overcame it, then you have also the power that we overcome our things in life um, that are bothering us so much. So please help us with the power of your spirit through the next week and all the stuff, all the things we have to do. And please keep us concentrated on you, on your spirit, on your point of view, on your power and all the ability that comes from all the ability that we also have right now through your spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. Feel free to unmute your Amen. mics. And, uh, Amen. What's yeah. up, Mixer? What's going on? We got uh, two yeah, we more services know. tonight. And uh, an alt space. That was great. I had you know, my, where's your... My I'm feeling on that. It, it yeah. doesn't... It's like maybe like, maybe next year, when the next year starts to talk on, in, next in our year? country. So, yeah. It's like... Oh, uh, my goodness. Like, I, I, I know, right? And I'm missing out. And I already know the whole go the thing that was really a big spoiler for me. So great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know about yeah. it when I watched it. Uh, I feel bad now, but, you know. Uh, uh, Bixer, we got two services tonight. One in alt or both in alt space. Um, so we'll see you there. And I think we're gonna need to add a second service here in VR chat. I don't know, man. We're getting a little you packed have out. To eat the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, You're I'm... inside the camera. <laughs> Am I? Where does it like stop at? Right here? Where? Yeah, right there. Is just, Where, right? Just enough. Right you, gotta, right you gotta look a little up. <laughs> okay, take two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> hey, Linda! <laughs> What's up? Uh... Oh, it's here, man. Yeah. <laughs>